Okay, so today we'll continue with the same chapter, um, deciding material and methods in ESP. And we will look at the options available to the um, instructor, language instructor uh, about the material um, and the methods also, okay? We'll be first talking about the material, the options that you as um, maybe ESP designers and as ESP instructors uh, have at hand uh, to deal with the method, okay? Uh, it's selection and sometimes it's creation, right? So uh, as we just, you know, touched upon some of the options of adopting, adapting and creating uh, material in ESP, right? So the first thing is, um, you know, and the first uh, option and the preferable choice as uh, ESP instructors or as ESP designer is to adopt the material, okay? And uh, we already differ differentiated between adopt and adapt yesterday. So adopting it is taking as it is, as whole, okay? And a selection of a textbook, um, the textbook alone, if you're selecting one textbook for uh, one kind of course, that means you have adopted, okay? So um, in the introductory class, I've already told you some of the basic advantages related to uh, using a textbook in the class okay so um, when you're using a textbook uh, that is uh, adopting that is you have adopted the material uh, you have not selected some of it but you have taken the whole book and you are not um, adding or subtracting anything from there so what happens is um, when you do that when you pick this option of adopting the material for ESP teaching, what happens is, um, you know, you get sequenced material, okay? Now everything is arranged for you, right? And then um, you have some familiar references also from where that material is taken, everything is ready for you. Then the books, textbooks are of course, uh, they have a professional look and uh, the chances are that they are developed by thorough professionals okay so um, if we talk about you know its cost effectiveness um, if you decide um, for a textbook then uh, the cost becomes less because more more the printing lesser would be the cost right so uh, the cost of the textbook is less and again uh, evaluating the material as well as the teachers become easy uh, because all of them are teaching the same textbook okay uh, or maybe every year the same textbook is taught so material evaluation as well as uh, evaluating the performance of um, language instructors becomes uniform uh, therefore um, easy and uh, the results would be valid right so the validity of evaluation increases if you are adopting a material and uh, one of the best ways of adopting is to select one of the textbooks right so um now um we also talked about who's going, who, who does the selection of uh, adopting, what textbook should be taught uh, in the classroom. This can be done by the administrator, okay? Uh, the institute where you are teaching ESP, and this can also be done by the language instructors. So um, and the second choice that we would be talking about shortly uh, is more related to the choice of the instructor or the teachers, but uh, you know, uh, before uh, the material is uh, carried out in the classrooms, the selection can be done by the administrator or by uh, the instructor both, okay? So, uh, you know, uh, when a textbook is used or when a method, uh, when some material is adopted, so, 
then it is also easy to monitor learners' progress. And then um, you can diagnose their problems also, um, in which sections they have uh, the problem because uh, um, I told you that the material is very much sequenced when uh, a material is adopted as it is, right? So um, um, other option can be, you know, uh, a textbook that is being taught in the classroom, but the other option can be a custom made material uh, which you can convert into published textbook uh, just for the target learners, okay? Uh, you can compile your own selection also and give it a form of a textbook. So uh, it is just not that, you know, um, it would be only the textbook itself, that is the published one, but you can compile um, exercises or uh, if you know, through needs analysis, the requirement or the needs of your learners, you can make a textbook by yourself, which would be custom made material and you can convert into a published uh, textbook, uh, especially for the target learners, especially for the learners that uh, you aim to teach, right? So, um, you know, um, moreover, as uh, ESP instructor, uh, you have the freedom to choose your own course material, okay? Um, designing can be a possibility, but um, again, uh, adopting is always a better option, right? And you can evaluate if you're selecting a material and then converting it into a textbook, you can always um, evaluate it um, on the points that we discussed yesterday. Okay, and I gave you an exercise uh, to do that. So um, it also depends. The choice uh, of the material also depends on the level that you are teaching, right? For instance, um, there is actually little or no choice when it is the primary classroom material, right? So, um, Maybe, you know, the administrator would decide what you need to teach to a group of people or uh, if you're teaching at a primary level, right? So then the choice is little. Um, these textbooks also help those instructors who are not really experienced because they uh, get this ready-made material, right? And... Uh, then with the passage of time, they can develop their own material also. But developing the material, I mean, again, you can uh, compile a textbook, right? So, you know, um, much of the time, and what is the practice in our Asian societies or what is popular in the Asian context is the use of uh, adopting a textbook, okay? And uh, we have also experienced um, while learning the language that we have learned it through proper series of uh, textbook. And seldom was the case that teacher was bringing her own material to the class in order to teach the language, right? So uh, what we infer from our experiences that uh, much of the time, the selection or adopting of the material or deciding what material would be taught in the classrooms lied with uh, the administrators, okay, and not with the instructors, right? Now, um, the next uh, choice that we would be talking about when you're not taking things as they are and uh, you're trying to bring some change, and why would you bring a change in? Uh, whatever material is provided to you because of the different kind of needs that uh, you feel about your students and how do you get to know about this these needs you get to know about these needs through your needs analysis and um, the other reason why would you select few things and leave other things which is called as adapting the published material you would be doing it um, because you know um, you feel 
that uh, some of the sections of the given material are of less use to your um, learners, okay? Or maybe you feel that they are too simple, right? Or they are too complex, or they are too difficult for the for your learner especially, okay? Maybe uh, those were recommended for the learners a year back, but the new group of people that you have received uh, as your students and through their needs analysis, you have a feeling that some of the sections in the book, you know, are not really um, easy for them to learn or too easy for them to learn. Uh, it is not X plus one for them. So you need to adapt the method uh, material in that case, you cannot adopt it, okay? Other than that, you know, uh, what happens and what we have been experiencing and that people who design the material, they, for some reason, cannot update it, right? That is why you must have seen that um, so many books uh, are being taught since ages. If I give you a simple example, I do not know which book did you study at your uh, inter level, but um, there was one, um, I think it was a novel, if I remember it correctly, its name was Mr. Chips. So that novel was um, read by my mother and the same novel was read by me. So for some reason, um, someone who decided upon the material, what material would be taught in the classroom or to the group of students at an inter level, um, they could not update it, okay? And um, you know, things, uh, especially academic, uh, needs to be updated from time to time. Um, courses, syllabuses, and therefore uh, the material, right? Uh, that's why uh, one of the prime uh, duties or the works that are done by Higher Education Commission is to keep updating your syllabus, okay? For instance, uh, till now we have got uh, like three, four, four curriculum of BS. Starting from 2006 to 2008, they changed it in eight. They updated again in 2012 that you are studying. And then um, one curriculum is uh, 2017 that your juniors are studying. Uh, so uh, see the update is not really regular. Initially it was 2006 and 2008, two years. And then it was 2008, 2012. Uh, four years and then it was more time uh, they took to update the curriculum 2017 right so um, um, there are places where curriculum syllabuses uh, courses are updated um, every year and they need to be evaluated also every year whether they would be of some use to the students or there is a need to change um, some material related to it all of that Right. So uh, um, other reasons why a teacher would adapt because um, um, there can be new advances and you found yourself um, in a difficult situation or in a different situation than your uh, previous colleagues or your seniors. Uh, you might get a different kind of students. And as far as you know, as ESP is concerned, um, you might be working with people um, in a completely from a completely different discipline that your colleagues haven't taught. Okay, uh, for instance, you know every 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 uh, few years the university tr introduces few more departments, right? So you might be going there to teach them. So the requirement would be different. Then um, the material that is handed over to you. Uh, would not work as it is expected to work in your classroom. So the material might ignore important points or include some irrelevant ones which are not needed by your students. So you need to adapt what is 
useful for you and you need to you just uh, need to leave what is irrelevant to the particular discipline or you feel that now would not be of much use to your students you know um there can be other reasons um for instance the material that is uh, provided to you is overly simplistic or it is overly complicated it is too easy uh, for the level that you are teaching or your te your students already know what the material is and uh, they already uh, have gone through those exercises or they already know those concepts that are given to you so you know you don't have to teach them twice you need to bring something newer uh, in the class you need to bring something interesting in the class so that the students stay motivated right so what um, do you do uh, in adapting uh, it is just not about selection and uh, uh, you know uh, just not selecting some of the material and selecting a part of the material it is also about uh, simplifying the material okay so you're not changing it but you're trying to simplify for instance you know you find that the examples related to a concept are difficult for your students so you keep the concept the concept needs to be taught to the student for example you know um, you need to teach them argumentative essays okay uh, and the example that is given in the book uh, you feel that you know um, that is difficult or uh, the example that is given uh, in the book related to the kinds of essay um, do not relate to their culture or to the culture of the students so it is it might be difficult for them to relate to it so what you do in adapting is you have kept the concept okay you have not changed the topic you are required to teach them the kinds of essays and maybe you have to focus on the argumentative essay you are doing that you cannot remove it from the syllabus or the curriculum but what you can do and you would do uh, if you are adapting the published material you will simplify it you would change the example okay so if there there is a passage <clears throat> i'm giving you another example if there is a passage of reading comprehension and you feel that you know um the passage is difficult so you will still teach them reading comprehension but you will uh, bring some easier passage for them okay and again um, vice versa uh, if you are teaching them reading comprehension and you find that uh, the passage is too simple for the level or for the group of students that you are teaching then you'll still teach them reading comprehension but you'll change the passage okay so uh, when you are doing this uh, of course the kind of analysis that we have already done would tell you a lot okay for instance uh, and the discourse analysis the genre analysis that we did all of these uh, would guide you towards adapting the material okay so uh, other than that you know you can expand and you can simplify you can delete few things you can replace them and rephrase them and you can reorder the material maybe you do not agree with the sequence you want to go with some other sequence you want to do exercise five before you go to exercise three maybe so this is adapting okay uh, you are keeping all the exercises you are required to do 10 exercises in the class but you have a feeling that exercise one uh, is a bit difficult and exercise five is easier and you know that if the students are able to do five then they can only move to four and then the last one should be first so you can rearrange you can reorder replace um you can elaborate on things you can simplify them you can expand you can explain um, you can change um, the examples okay for example so uh, this is what adapting is right so uh, adapting 
uh, is more useful than adopting. It, it is a little difficult as a language instructor or someone who has been um, designing the course, um, but um, uh, you know that that might be more useful, especially uh, while we are talking about uh, teaching of English for specific purposes or English for specific purposes. Uh, because um, every time you teach uh, a group of students, they come with uh, their own needs, okay, and their own requirements. So um, adopting a material gives you little space to change, uh, to meet the needs of your learners. Uh, this option of adopt adapting is far more useful in your uh, in ESP classrooms because. Um, um, you can change things, right? Um, you can, uh, you have the liberty to work on the already given material, okay? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little difficult for you to design it and it is a little difficult for you to provide the same to the students uh, because providing a single textbook is easier than providing them a lot of uh, scattered kind of a material that you might be changing every week or in a, after every few days uh, but um, this method of uh, selecting a material works better when it comes to the esp classrooms right so um now uh, coming to the third option that we have uh, you know it is about creating the material right or creating custom material okay or customizing the material so customizing the material is almost like adapting the material and i i told you that um, we do not create anything anew okay so we create something out of the previous works or out of something that was similar Okay, so creating custom material um, is the only option when you are unable to adopt. A textbook is not available or someone is, uh, you know, people are not helping you to suggest a textbook. You, are, you do not have much knowledge. Uh, or, you know, it might be the demand of the setting. The setting is new and you don't have any material, uh, provided material, and you do not have much knowledge of any available material. So what you do is you create the custom material. Custom material means customizing it according to the needs of the students. Okay. So um, we are going to look at some of the steps because you know creating material is a process. Adopting and adapting are not processes, okay? Because you can ad ad adopt, the material is with you. You can adapt, the material is still with you. You are only working on the material. But when it comes to creating, it becomes a long process. And you can only create uh, the material if you have ample time, okay? So uh, the choices are just not free. Options are just not free to be chosen uh, because there are certain restrictions. If you have time constraints, then of course you cannot go for uh, creating uh, custom material, okay? Uh, when the time is short, preferably you will adopt or adapt the published material, right? So let's talk about some of the steps in creating uh, the custom material. Right, so the f there, there are five steps to this approach. And the first is, of course, review the previous work, right? So you don't, um, again, I repeat that you don't reinvent anything. As it says, no need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, when it comes to material designing, okay? But what you have to see is you need to review the previous works, right? So uh, 
you can take help from you know your seniors your colleagues you can discuss with them you can visit the internet look at what is available on um, the material that you need to need to teach now how do you know what to uh, search for on the internet what kind of material might be your need this comes from your learning objectives okay so what is your aim or what is your goal or what you want your students to learn by the end of the course determines the selection of the material. Keeping that in mind, you are going to uh, work. And the first step is uh, you need to review the previous works. Okay. You can review the published material in that area. Um, how is it introduced? Explained? What skills is uh, what skills are your focus? So, you would be reading the relevant ones: the research articles, the exercises, the practices, uh, something that was similar uh, in profession. For instance, you know, if you are developing ESP for the doctors, and if you are developing ESP for the nurses, so there must be some similarity because the setting is the same right the workplaces are the same so you know they might need their their language requirement uh maybe uh, stay the same right now once you have reviewed um, the previous material you create a gen general plan now by general plan you mean uh, you're you're going to uh, outline the material what would be your requirement so you need to have a strong knowledge uh, about what you're going to create. So uh, according to your objectives of the course um, and the analysis that you have conducted, you are going to outline. By general plan, we mean uh, the outline, okay? Then you're going to select what material would be used to carry this content this is called as carrier content what material to carry the content now you are going to uh, write down about the content what are you going to teach actually okay now for in the outline you have mentioned uh, the content now in the content carrier you would actually talk about the material that would be carried or that would be delivered inside the classrooms okay so that would be in the form of explanation um, examples um, practicing of the exercises right uh, one option is you can write it by your own self okay again i repeat that uh, uh, that really depends how experienced you are right if you are not experienced, um, then uh, adopting is the option. But if you have some experience or if you believe that you have a good knowledge of the material or the availability of the material or the practices uh, in the previous years, then um, uh, you can opt for uh, customizing the material. Otherwise, that doesn't make much sense. Okay, so uh, one option is to write this content yourself based on the intuition right what what do you mean by intuition by the way quickly we are almost running out of time also before we get disconnected what do you mean by intuition when it comes to you know um, teaching and learning if you have been experiencing it as a student of english and then as a teacher of english you develop a kind of intuition so you can um, write the content uh, with your intuition also uh, what might work in a particular classroom or what might work with a particular group of students uh, but that only comes as i have told you with experience okay so if you are not experienced um, you need to uh, take help from someone uh, it becomes you know risky uh, if you are not experienced okay uh, other than that, you know, this book tells you that um, intuition sometimes is not very successful, but uh, you can, um, it's, it's risky, but it is one of the option. It is not the only option. 
of writing the content, but it is one of the options. Okay. Now, what you can do um, while you are uh, trying to uh, select the carrier content, what material should be carried to the classrooms? Uh, authentic samples uh, would be a wonderful idea. You know. Now, what what are these authentic language samples? What are language samples or authentic language sam samples? Language samples or authentic language samples. Remember authentic material that we did in the last class? What, what are authentic uh, materials for language teaching? Similar are the authentic samples. Uh, Menal, um, see, ESP is usually taught to people uh, who are learning English as a second language. Okay, and the the, the course that we did last semester was teaching of English to the speakers of other languages or to the speakers who are learning it as a second language. So, um, okay, if you, if, you, if you want to say that the material created for the natives, that's right, but it cannot be that is material created to teach the native speakers, okay? Yes, it is right that, you know, um, material that is created for the natives. And for example, yes, Minal, for example, 